you and the Westdale. It's quite the story. Folks watching movies right here since 1935, with the good times rolling up to 2017, when the grand old lady was almost torn down. But thanks to fundraising, it was saved by a group of community volunteers, folks like you. And now, the Westdale's a showpiece, a not-for-profit charitable organization restored to its full glory and heritage designated to boot. Cool. So then right from this very seat, you could check out way more than just great movies. There's all kinds of arts and culture, music, uh, talks, performances, and of course, popcorn. But like in all good stories, there's an unexpected twist. 2020 hits. New normal with stages going dark. The world. Oh, thank. You. Take a PH. No, which means we need a little help from our friends to keep on keeping on. So if you can donate a little or a lot, it sure would help us keep the lights on. One of the heroes of this story. Stay tuned for the next chapter in the Westdale. I feel the warmth of the sun on my skin. I hear the lapping of waves rolling in now. I'm living in the now. I taste the sweet of the straw. of your lips on mine now I'm living Living in the now, now. Have you some now? Oh, 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 now. I'm living. Hey, thank you, living in the now, and yeah, what a now we're living in right about now, aren't we folks? Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, we're so happy that you folks are sitting there in your living rooms or kitchens, wherever you are, maybe the bedroom, watching this show. I can't believe we're doing this. There's 
really no one in the audience here. I wish we could show you the audience, but it is empty. We got a cameraman, a producer, a few people, but we're, you know, like pretty lonely here, but it's good to have you folks out there watching the show, because this is our very first streaming online kitchen party. I like to call it a kitchen party, but it doesn't really go with the online thing, because it's, uh, you know, they don't really blend, but that's what we're trying to do, just do something that's real casual here. Um, we're hoping that, uh, well, we've got two goals for the show here. We, first of all, are trying to raise a little money for the Westdale. We're a nonprofit uh, community uh, organization. Um, we, uh, we do have things to, bills to pay, mortgages and stuff, and there's really no one uh, has been in the theater since uh, the middle of March. So if you feel like donating a little, uh, that'd be great. The other reason we're doing this is because people like us are dying to get on stage. Us musicians, it's in our blood. We gotta get out there and, and play. And, and you know, nowadays, nobody can play anywhere. Um, so we're, we're happy to, to present this to you folks, uh, kind of a venue for lonely musicians that have no stage. We're bringing them on here at the Westdale. So uh, we're hoping this will last for a little while. We've got a few shows planned for the next four weeks. Uh, it's gonna be every Thursday night at eight o'clock. No matter who I've asked to come on the show, the response has been incredible. Everyone wants to be on the show, so you won't believe the lineup we've got coming on. So long as this is successful, um, we're going to bring you some uh, some great songwriters uh, that have some neat stories. The accents more on the stories here, I think, than the songs, because you can hear the songs on the record. But um, I kind of always like the stories behind the songs. So that's kind of what we're going for for here. We're trying to create a comfortable living room sort of environment for our guests so they feel comfy. And uh, speaking of our guests, I have my favorite two musicians here tonight. This is uh, Caroline Wiles and Bob Deutsch. Now, uh, we've been playing together for several years. Well, actually, Bob and I have been playing together for over 50 years. Um, but uh, a few years ago, Caroline, uh, who's been living with Bob for years now, living happily in Ancaster, uh, asked me if I'd like to make a trio with her and Bob, and I jumped at the chance. So here we are as a, a trio, McCurley, Doidge, and Wiles. I gotta say, I wanna just tell you, Caroline's from Montreal. She's not a true Hamilton native, but we welcome her here. Um, when Bob and I were growing up in Ancaster, small town, we always wished someday we'd have a, a girlfriend from a big city like Montreal. And Bob, you we won. Go. Hey, you. We, we, we got it. We got it. I got one too, a, a wife from Montreal. So that's a, that's a good thing that came true. Now, that first song that we played is my favorite song that Caroline ever wrote. She's written a number of great songs, but that one was called Living in the Now. Yes, Living in the Now. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I wrote that about two years ago. Um, it's just, you know, a reminder to live in the moment, be in the moment. And I find when I practice that, I just feel, I just feel happier. You just feel calmer. Uh, quite often, if you think about the future, sometimes you worry more if you think about the past. So I just thought it's a, it's a nice thing to remind people to just be in the present moment because that's the best place to be. And especially nowadays with the pandemic and all, we got to live in the now, live for the moment. Um, I've really actually been enjoying it myself. So I also want to say a little bit about Bob. Uh, as I mentioned, Bob and I go back to um, our first band was in grade seven at Pheasenden, Pheasenden Public School in Ancaster. We played on the stage there. <laughs> it was kind of a joke, but, uh, but we pulled it off. And uh, ever since we've been um, you know, playing, playing away and having a good time. Anyway, um, Bob, let's go a bit into your past, like you started music as a very young lad. I think you were one or two? No, 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 I was four. Four, yeah. okay, he was four. <clears throat> I took piano lessons. I didn't want to do that, I wanted a trumpet. Oh. And when I was seven, I got a trumpet, and I started taking lessons on that. But oh. then when I was 13, I saw a concert and went, I gotta play the bass guitar. Uh -huh. And came home to find out my dad wouldn't let me buy one because he was afraid I'd quit the trumpet, so oh. I made one. And <laughs> you that, thought, that screw you, Dad, I'm, I'm making my own. That's what I played in that band. It was a fretless bass that I made myself, played it for two years, and uh, it, it actually worked, but 
Nice. Looking about it back, it was disgusting. <laughs> well, and the rest is history, as they say. Now, in the middle of high school, and we're all going to Ancaster High, I remember, I think you got a call from Ian Thomas, who uh, we're hoping to have on the show in August. Um, he asked you to join Tranquility Base back in the 60s. Yeah, they were just a trio at the time, Ian, Oliver, and Nora. Oh, yeah, Ian, Oliver, and, and Nora. And uh, they were sort of about to be signed by RCA Records. So it was a good time to leave school. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was with you on that, yeah. Bob. Jeez. It, was pretty, it was pretty exciting, you know, big studios in Toronto. And oh, yeah. But you got to admit, growing up in Ancaster in the 60s, it was paradise, wasn't it? It was like idyllic. Well, there was bands on every street corner, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. That was the funny part, you know? Danny Langlois was across Ooh. the highway. Danny Langlois. Mm. Oh. <laughs> we won't go into those stories. Yeah. But it really, you know, growing up in Ancaster in such a paradise sort of place uh, really made us appreciate the nature and the history and everything in our town because it was really a, a gifted childhood. And um, it got me into history. Uh, I started going to Field Coat, the Dundas Museum, and learning all about what happened in Ancaster. A lot of folks don't know how Ancaster played such a, a big part in uh, the War of 1812 and the settling of Canada in general, um, which, you know, I'm kind of segueing to my next song, which is uh, about the Underground Railroad. A lot of people might not know it, but Ancaster was one of the final destinations of the railroad in the early 1800s. Ancaster was 30% black people, uh, mainly slaves that had escaped from the U.S. Uh, coming up on the railroad which is really just a bunch of people helping you get here. Um, so uh, it was uh, back then all the slaves down in the southern United States dreamed of coming to Canada to ride on that underground railroad and get up to the uh, what they always called the promised land. That's what people called Canada back then. So I wrote this song about uh, Enerals Griffin some of you may have visited the Griffin House in Ancaster. It's a National Historic Site. Enerals moved there in the early 1830s all the way from West Virginia. And I'll tell you that story because it's, uh, it's an, uh, kind of an amazing story. Enerals Griffin. This song's called The Promised Land. Three. <laughs> Griffin was born a slave, he picked cotton since he was three. The family got sold so he had no kin growing up in West Virginia. Morning bell ringing, still dark outside, he wakes up off a cabin floor. He walks to the fields, praying someday to escape for good forevermore. He picks real fast, trying to make his quota over a hundred pounds come time to weigh at the end of the day if he comes up short the whip comes down dreaming of running to freedom the north is calling your name living each day believing you ought to be staking your claim spending your whole life dreaming of a place to make your stand it's the home of the free here in the promised land. For 34 years in the cotton fields, he was planning his escape. So after his master passed away, came time to make his break. Took off running into the night and laying low all through the day. Gotta outsmart the slave patrols, getting paid to catch that runaway. He finally made it to Ohio, but the bloodhounds were on his trail. So he took off to go to Ontario, to the place of the Underground Railroad. A dreaming of a running of freedom. North is calling your name, living each day believing that you ought to be staking your claim, 
Spending your whole life dreaming of a place to make your stand. Well, that's the home of the free here in the promised land. So he settles in Lancaster, buys a farm, and starts living the pioneer life. Clearing the land and raising his family, he called it his little paradise. Staring off a porch from his rocking chair across the valley to the lake. Loving every day, he's been free after all those years of slavery. Dreaming of running a freedom, the North is calling you in. Living each day, believing that you ought to be staking your claim. Spending your whole life dreaming of getting out while you can to the home of the free here in the promised land. That's the home of the free here in the promised land. Yeah, whoa, hey. Thank you. Hey, we can hear you clapping from home. I can't believe it. Like they got, they're clapping from home. Well, that was the cameraman and the producer clapping there. <laughs> well, we're having fun playing to an empty theater, but we know you folks are all watching at home. So, moving right along here, and in a similar vein, you won't believe that in almost exactly the same year and right next door, there was a big event that happened at the Hermitage in Lancaster. Caroline? Yeah, so I'd heard about um, the love tragedy that happened in the early 1800s at the Hermitage. Um, Bob had told me about it, and uh, a lot of local Lancaster people um, know the story. And um, so it happened at the Hermitage, and, and they named, um, named the story Lover's Lane, um, and the street Lover's Lane was named after this story from the Hermitage. And um, I'll just play the song, and it will tell the story. In the town of Ancaster in 1833, William Black was a coachman in love with the niece of his boss, Colonel Ives, who refused to give her hand. So William took his own life, a devastated man. Lovers lane Lovers Lane, some say at night you can hear his mournful cries. Lovers Lane, I felt his pain.
Lovers Lane. That's a true story, folks, and that's all we do is true stories. I'm going to take you back 30 years. Yes, we're going back in time from 1834 to 1799. I'm going to tell you about the very first settlers in this area and how they settled. Well, actually, they settled up by Kitchener Waterloo but moved here. So what happened was in 1799, two guys in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Joseph Shirk and Sam Betzner decided they had to leave the U.S. because they were about to get drafted to fight the war. So, and being Mennonites, they said, let's move to Canada. So they walked up here from Pennsylvania. They lived in Ancaster for the first year. One of them stayed with uh, Richard uh, uh, Beasley and the other guy with uh, Wilson. You know, like they were living right in Ancaster in the winter of 79, 1799. And then in the spring, they went up to Kitchener by Ayr, the town of Ayr, and bought some land off, yes, Chief Joseph Brandt. They bought some land from the indigenous folks there and um, lived there until 1817 when they had a big fire and a flood and Sam Betzner thought, I got to get out of this place, and he moved to West Flamborough. And they settled in West Flamborough and 1817, Gary Betzner is a good friend of mine. Oh, by the way, hi, Gary. Hi, Shirley. I know they're watching from the farm out there. So in um, 1817, Gary's, you know, seven generations back bought the farm, and uh, they've been working that farm for 200 years. I saw that on his truck a couple of years ago. Bay Vista Farm established 1817. I said, Gary, you must be having an anniversary this year. And he said, yeah, we are. I said, I got to write a song about this. So the more I dug into it, the more I found out this is the true story of how Ontario got settled by the Betzners and a few other folks. It's called, uh, oh, let me take this off. It's called Bay Vista Farm. Two. Back in 1870, back in 1771, back in 1755, Sam Betzner knew for his kin to thrive, he should leave his Swiss home and cross the sea. It was time to go because the government said if there was a war, he'd have to fight for them. But over in America, he thought he'd be free. Then in 1771, Sam Betzner had himself a son who he named Samuel D. So the story goes. Samuel D. was just like his pa. He was against the U.S. drafting laws. So in Conestoga wagons, they left for Ontario. Davis the farm been here 200 years working the land since the days of the pioneers living on the edge of the Canadian frontier where you can almost see heaven from here well then in 1817 Flamborough seemed to call his name, so he bought 200 acres and built a barn. And from the Dundas Valley down to Burlington Bay, that view would take your breath away. And 
so we called it Baby Fun. Baby Stefan has been here 200 years Working the land since the days of the pioneers Living on the edge of the Canadian frontier You can almost see heaven from here this old house has already seen nine generations of family. Let's raise our glass and toast their history. Well, it seems that now we just begun. We got more generations sure to come. Let's celebrate the next two centuries. Baby, this the farm in a here to hundred years work in the land since the days of the pioneers living on the edge of the Canadian frontier where you can almost see heaven from here baby Stefan been a here two hundred years work in the land since the days of the pioneers Living on the edge Of the Canadian frontier You can almost see Heaven from here Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you folks are clapping out there at home, so thanks a lot, and thanks again for joining us. This is so exciting. Um, okay, moving right along, we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it into the, the present now, aren't we, Caroline? We're gonna do another one of your songs. Yeah, about right. um, Spring Valley. Spring Valley. Yeah, we, we hike a lot in Spring Valley, we love it there, and uh, I thought, oh, I gotta write a song about Spring Valley. And um, Bob grew up hanging out in Spring Valley, didn't you? Oh, did I ever. Yeah, so we walk the trails <laughs> all the time, yeah. But Mike still rides his bike through there. Uh, Almost daily. On his way to rehearsal, he's got his, on his bike, he's got his little backpack and his Nando <laughs> rides to our house. People wonder, who's that weird guy riding through the valley with a Mando sticking out of a backpack? But, well, let's do that song called Walking in Spring Valley.
Okay. Thank you, folks. That's another true story that happened right there in Ancaster. Now, speaking of which, I want to tell you. I want to tell you a couple of true stories about Bob Deutsch over there. Like, not only was he in Tranquility Base, but right, right about the same time, you had that band going with Dan Lanois called uh, The Incursion. Yeah, the just, Incursion. Just before that, actually. Okay, it was right before. That's right, and it was like. Acid rock or something. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Heavy, heavy shit they were doing. The incursion. And then you played with Ray Materic, yeah. one of Hamilton's greatest songwriters everywhere, but he kind of disappeared out west on us. But uh, Ray wrote some great songs. And then in the mid-70s, 76, uh, Bob Deutsch started up uh, Grand Avenue Studio with Bob and Dan Lanois, who we spoke of earlier. And we won't tell any stories about them. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, that was 76, so that uh, you guys just had your 40th anniversary a few yeah, years ago. Yeah, 40 uh, years. Holy mackerel. Bob also has received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Hamilton um, Arts uh, folks. Uh, so that means he's achieved a lot in his lifetime. And uh, I'm proud to say I'm his buddy. Yeah. That's fine, though. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing what he loved every day, but somehow he got the award. So uh, that's good. And that kind of speaks to, I got to switch, that speaks to the perfect childhood that I spoke of earlier that we all grew up with. Uh, yours was fairly perfect as well, I think, Caroline. Um, does anyone have a perfect childhood? <laughs> okay, well, I did, but. No, it was pretty good. It was great. I grew up with three awesome sisters, and um, they're just wonderful. And my, my uh, yeah, I have great parents, and I'm very blessed. Okay, we're all blessed. Although I'm an atheist, so I'm not sure I am, but I'll be the only atheist in heaven. Okay, no, that brings me, that's another song I'm working on right now, but um, right now I'm going to do you my l most recent song, and it's about growing up in Ancaster. I was a doctor's son. I, um, my parents were, like, incredibly supportive my whole life. They did nothing but tell me how great I was going to be <laughs> when I grew up. Little did they know. But... Um, so it was just the perfect childhood. And I guess that's a reason we don't really do the blues in our band, because I can't sing the blues. I really have nothing, you know, bluesy to sing about. But having, having said that, I realized that I should sing about not being able to sing about it. So I wrote this song. It's called Why I Can't Sing the Blues. Three, four. Well, I woke up this morning and I wrote down this song But I can't really sing it, cause for me it's all wrong I wasn't raised in Harlem or Chicago, Illinois I grew up in the suburbs, just a middle class boy My folks never beat me, they didn't drink a lot of booze And that's why, that's why, that's why. I can't sing the blues well, I don't drive a Chevy or a beat-up Ford. I don't drive a pickup with a hole in the floor. I got me a Beamer and a new SUV. It's like someone up above is watching over me. I never had a nickname, never had to pay my dues. And that's why, that's why, that's why. I can't sing the blues. Well, you ask about my love life, got me a girl. But when it comes to love, and she's the best in the world, she never gonna leave me for a younger man. She always brings me jelly roll whenever I'm in a jam. Oh, come on, honey. I ain't losing my teeth, I ain't losing my hair And if I'm losing my mind, well I really don't care 
got no trouble with the law. I don't even own a gun, so I won't be on death row up for murder one. I ain't fixing to die because I live the life I choose. That's why, That's why. That's why. I can't sing the blues. Yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why. I can't sing the blues. True story, people. That's all we do here at the Westdale. It's just all nothing but the truth. Okay, so. <laughs> Here's another true story. You can't make this up. No, you can't make this shit up because we're uh, this stuff up. We're we're coming to the close of the show, and we. And it's a local story because it happened to me here in Ancaster. Right there. And then just up the hill. What did and it? Actually, what? Bob co-wrote this song. He co-wrote this song. He wrote the, co-wrote the music with me. It's right. Like it's got such a cool vibe. Okay. Right. All right. So I I um I got a new kitten a couple of years ago, two years ago, and um, I was starting to learn how to meditate. <coughs> and I read this book that you can do receiving meditation, receive anything you want. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll try that. So I started meditating, and this is what I received within two minutes. <laughs> okay. Two, three, four. I was meditating, lying on my bed. My kitty jumped on. A pretty hair. I reached down and shook to fur. I looked down, it wasn't her. Ooh, I was petting the dead mouse. Ooh, I was petting the dead mouse. A song to end with, Patting the Dead Mouse. Woohoo! I got to thank you, folks, for joining us tonight. Well, we've had a fantastic time here. I don't know about you people. You're in your living room having a good time, too, I hope. So thanks a lot for joining us. I just want to mention once more we're hoping that, you know, you might be able to give a little, uh, buddy, can you spare a dime? Um, or how did Wimpy put it on Popeye? Uh, I gladly repay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. So we're just hoping you can make a bit of a donation, 50 cents, a dollar, whatever you got. Um, also, I want to say we have to say thank you because we've got some sponsors, some people that have really helped out with the show. First of all, Bob and Caroline here have really helped out because I would have been lonely by myself, interviewing myself. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Marie Phillips and her company, Next Steps Planning, with um, IPC Securities. A uh, great financial planning company, and I'll vouch for uh, Marie Phillips, a great lady. So, Me uh, too. She's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome and a great music supporter. Um, so we love her. Uh, I want to thank my old company, MJM Media, who came in here to uh, help us get this all going, uh, Tyler and Marcy and Kara. 
Um, our marketing guy, Neil, the guy's like a genius when it comes to marketing. And uh, let's not forget Dan, the manager here, uh, really been helpful. So like the whole crew, we've got like sound guys here, Dave and Mark working on the online stuff. Uh, it's been quite a crew and quite an experience trying to launch this whole thing. Um, before we go, I just want to say next week, we've got a fantastic guy on the show. You've probably read uh, about him if you've seen the promo. It's Tom Cunningham Wilson. Tom Wilson is going to be on the show. Bob and I grew up with Tom. Um, we <laughs> He's quite a character, as you may know. Um, the great thing about Tom I think the greatest thing about Tom is that he is also not just a fantastic songwriter, but he's a great artist. Wait till you see his paintings. I think he's going to bring a couple next week. And his book, you guys got to read this book. It's called Beautiful Scars. Can you zoom on that in on that tie, as they say on TV? Zoom in on that. Beautiful Scars. That's a picture of, uh, well, Tom, and I won't say who the ladies are, but... This story is it's an amazing story. You know, I'm an English major. I've read thousands of books in my life, and I've got to say, this is one of the top ten books I've ever read. It's right up there with the big boys. So pick it up. Read this before next Thursday when Tom Wilson is going to be here on the show. And uh, it's going to be a great show. So thanks a lot, folks, for joining us from wherever you are around the world. We got a few folks from far away and most of the folks right from here in town. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll hope to see you next Thursday at uh, 8 p.m. streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks, everyone. See you all later.